Hi, my name's Natalie and I operate Literary Lime Walking Tours. Um, that's based here in Lyme Regis. And really, tonight I just wanted to tell you about a few of my favourite things to do in Lyme Regis. Um, my first, obviously, I'm clearly going to say that it's my tours. It would be stupid to say anything other than that. Um, so that's number one. The second one would be without a doubt, um, fossil hunting. That's what Lyme Regis is really famous for. Um, there are several guides in Lyme Regis that do fossil hunting. Probably one of the main ones is um, Paddy Howe, and he operates out of Lyme Regis Museum. Um, the third thing that I really like to do in Lyme is actually visit Lyme Regis Museum. Of course, I'm going to say that because I actually do some of the do some work for Lyme Regis Museum. I operate their Marianne tours. Um, the thing that I really love about the museum is the fact that there's really something for everybody there. Um, it's an award-winning museum for a very good reason. For example, you, as I said before, you can do the fossil hunting or you can do um, you can do history tours. You can also see an extensive collection of fossils, including a, um, a nictheosaur. There's a lot of um, big ammonites, so many cool things. There's also, um, actually a few years ago, they had the original ichthyosaur skull that was discovered in Lyme Regis over 200 years ago. Other things in the museum that are of general interest are a very, very old fire engine. It dates to the sort of mid to late 1800s, if I remember correctly. So it's quite unusual. And there's a really an extensive amount of things for children at the museum as well. Um, I guess the fourth item on my list would be the church in Lyme Regis, St. Michael's um, Anglican Church. My reason for that is mainly the windows, the stained glass windows, they are incredible. Um, there's some really famous uh, glass designers who have work in St. Michael's Church. Uh, one is C.E. Kemp, who is one of the most renowned designers of glass. Another would be William Wales, who was also a very renowned Victorian designer of glass. He had um, work commissioned by Pugin, so he was pretty far up there. His style is quite unusual and that in that he um, trained in Germany. So his style is mainly in the sort of uh, German tradition. There's a lot of bold colours mixed in together, which is very unusual for English stained glass. There's another window that's really interesting in that church, and it's sort of a mystery window. No one really knows that much about it. And try as I might to research it, um, I've not really found out that much about it. It shows um, a knight and a grail of some sort. People always say it's meant to be the Holy Grail. Um, there's no real evidence for that. It's just an assumption. Um, a friend of mine did a lot of research on this window. And it's certainly an intriguing piece. Um, full of legend and metaphor and... Um, historical illusion. The next thing that I like to do in Lyme is to visit the Undercliff Nature Reserve. Um, the Undercliff Nature Reserve is the largest reserve in the UK and it's the closest we have to a jungle. Um, it stretches west of Lyme, um, so it goes right the way from where the Cobb is roughly to Seaton, which is about sort of four and a half, five miles west of Lyme. Um, it's really an incredible place. There are so many things that you can do there. There are a lot of old ruins that you can visit. and um, There's a one main track that goes through the Undercliff and then you have a couple of sort of small paths that lead off here and there. Really the main thing is to stick to the main path. Um, it can be a very dangerous place if you don't know where you're going um, or if you go wandering off the, the path here, there and everywhere. Um, there's also John Fowles' house is on the Undercliff Nature Reserve. Um, John Fowles is a world famous author. He wrote the book, The French Lieutenant's Woman, which was made into a movie with Meryl Streep and Jeremy Irons. 
he also wrote um, The Magus and The Collector. They're all extremely, extremely famous novels. Um, the house in which the French Lieutenant's Woman was written is situated on the Undercliff. Another great little place to visit in Lyme is called Dinosaur Land. Now, you're going to think probably if you're an adult, you don't want to visit here. You'd be rock. It's a great little museum. It's absolutely amazing for all the family. Kids love it and adults do too. The actual building that it's housed in is quite interesting in itself. Um, it's It dates to between 1755 and 1756 and it was the Congregational Chapel in Lyme. It was actually dissenters. They are the sort of largest work of, uh, group of worshippers that aren't connected with the Church of England. Um, and as a term, it can really cover anything from Quakers through to, you know, um, Catholics. But as I said before, this was sort of uh, really more congregationalist. Um, and it's where Mary Anning, the famous fossil hunter, went to chapel. Um, the museum itself contains a lot of different things. So anything from like dinosaur replicas right the way through to little tiny ammonites. Um, it also out front, it has a range of plants, all dating, uh, all intended to sort of represent different geological now, periods. In my humble opinion, one of the most beautiful places you can visit in Lyme is Belmont House. Um, this is a Georgian villa that was built um, for Eleanor Code, who is a famous designer of architectural features. Um, her name is given to the stone that she manufactured, code stone. Um, this villa has is you know decorated from top to bottom in code stone. It's so ornate and so wonderful. People say it looks like a wedding cake. It's so amazing in its decoration. Um, much later on, it was also inhabited by the author John Fowles. Uh, John Fowles, as I said before, wrote a very famous book called The French Lieutenant's Woman. Um, he he bought the house, Belmont, which is now owned by the Landmark Trust, with the anticipated proceeds of his book, The French Lieutenant's Woman. Um, so it has quite an unusual history to it. It's had a lot of modifications over the years and recently. Um, when the Landmark Trust bought it, they um, did it up. They did about £1.8 million pounds worth of work to it. So a lot of work went on there. And what they tried to do was restore it to its previous glory when Eleanor Code had it. So they researched all the paints and all the kind of techniques that they use inside the house to decorate it are period accurate. Um, and now they let it out as a holiday home. But on certain weekends usually one in spring and one in autumn, they will open up the house to visitors. So it's really worth looking out for when that's open. Another favourite thing I have to do in Lyme is actually, it's not really in Lyme, it's just outside, but um, it's a shooting range. It's an Olympic sized shooting range and it's on the old road between Lyme Regis and Charmouth on the A35. Um, the, tu the tunnel, as it's called, is actually literally an old road tunnel and they converted it into a shooting range after it had been sort of disused as a, a road tunnel for quite some time. Um, they have a 100 metre range, a 35 metre range and a 25 metre range um, and they do a lot of training there but you can go as a beginner, um, anyone can go at any age, so adults and children and you pay between like... Um, 15 and 25 pounds depending on your age and experience and you can shoot for an hour and it's great fun you can join for 25 pounds a month that's pretty cool um yeah and i really like to do that so what trip to lime regis would be complete without a visit to the cob the cob needs no explanation for most but in case you don't know what it is it is as john fowles put it quite simply the most beautiful sea run part on the south coast of England. Um, it's a harbour wall. It's also a sea defence, so it protects the, the town against southwesterlies. Um, 
and Jane Austen featured it in her novel Persuasion, um, where Louisa Musgrave, who is just a young girl, decides to try and catch her man by flinging herself off the top of the cob and into his arms. Unfortunately, on the second go, he misses and she is concussed and um, really quite unfortunate. Um, later on, John Fowles uses it as a sort of key scene in The French Lieutenant's Woman. It's where Charles Smithson, the protagonist, first sees the French Lieutenant's Woman and he falls in love with her from that moment on. She intrigues him and he adores her. Um, the the story is, I mean, Lime just is really central to the story and the cob really is the sort of main scene in that story. <laughs> 